You know, I had a different video planned for today, but while I was writing it, my friend from the college we just graduated from texted me and said, why is MHC incapable of doing happy plays? And I was like, is that rhetorical or do you want an actual answer? And they said actual answer. And we had a really great in-depth conversation about how we need to set the academic institution of how we teach theater and arts on fire. And I got really heated about it. So I moved that script for the other video to a different week. And we're gonna talk about this today instead because I haven't ranted about the education system on here in a while and I miss it. I don't know if I actually miss it. I don't know why I said that. Oh, also I am a white person with light brown shoulder length curly hair. I'm sitting in front of a uh, plain wall with green leaves on it and I'm wearing a black t-shirt. It has a whale on it, but you can't see the whale because of how the camera is. Great. I've made a lot of videos on here about curriculum, specifically arts curriculum, and what makes it inherently inaccessible, unsafe, and flawed, but I haven't really spoken about the extracurriculars that go along with that curriculum, i.e. the fact that theater programs at colleges almost exclusively put on the most traumatic shows humanly possible. So let's talk about why that is, where that comes from, what the impact of that is, and what I wish schools did instead, because this conversation needs to be had way more often than it is. And this phenomenon is also one of those things that is a much wider issue in the, like, arts industry, but we typically only notice it within really concentrated settings like schools and award shows if we notice it at all, so we definitely need to point it out more and have these conversations more. The overarching idea here is that Society sees drama as superior to comedy. We see it as the more difficult, more strenuous, requiring more talent and skill, and so it is the default teaching tool. The majority of theater programs will have their seasons consist of like four really dark, sad shows, and then maybe one Shakespearean comedy. Modern comedy is very rarely in the mix, and I don't think people realize how much of an issue that is until I talk about the fact that my friend was in a required show at their conservatory program that included significant nudity just after their 18th birthday, or that like I portrayed a woman who was assaulted, murdered her husband, and then was sent to the electric chair just after my 19th birthday, and that one was during the pandemic over Zoom, so I had to do it in my own clothes in my own room, and I to this day cannot wear those clothes anymore. My friend who was 18 or 19 at the time was in a play at my school that involved FGM, and after the show closed they had to skip class for like a week to recover because they were so viscerally upset about having to play a character that inflicted that upon another person, and like it's just it's such a problem and we need to acknowledge that that's not just a one-off experience. That is a collective theatrical, like most people have that experience. And I feel like a large part of this has to do with the tortured artist trope and that we see suffering and trauma as a required prerequisite for good art. And therefore our artistic education system is centered around teaching, I put that in air quotes, skills in the most jarring, overwhelming way possible. I've spoken about this before on this channel, I, I, j I don't like how we set up classrooms. But that expands outside of education as well. In the industry, we inherently reward suffering and trauma. Like, think about how many comedies get largely ignored during the awards season. Not just in the Oscars, but the Tony Awards as well, and other award ceremonies. I don't pay attention to award ceremonies, they always happen after I go to bed, and they're for the producers, they're not actually for the people. Anyway. Generally, most of the clips they show in those award shows are of people crying, screaming, throwing things, being deep and solemn and dramatic, whatever. And it's not really the comedy stuff that much. And I'm also not saying that these films and shows don't have comedic pieces to them because they often will have little jokes sprinkled throughout, but the main emphasis is on the depths of pain in the performances and the storytelling. Tragedy valorizes a serious emotional engagement with life's problems, even struggle to the death. Comedy, by contrast, embodies an anti-heroic, pragmatic attitude towards life's incongruities. This also isn't a new concept. Aristotle referred to comedy as an imitation of inferior people. And there's also the fact that early Christian leaders warned against laughter because in the Bible it only really appears as hostile and in a mocking manner, and because they viewed laughter as being a time when a person loses self-control and associates it with laziness, irresponsibility, jealousy, lust, and other sinful things. Which you would think that the Bible and theatrical history don't connect, but throughout history the church on and off outlawed theater because they considered it to be inappropriate and like frivolous and whatnot, and a huge period of this was in the Middle Ages, so a lot of performers then started forming their art kind of around what church leaders or um, non-religious leaders like kings and queens might approve of in order to be able to still do shows and get money. And also the history of mystery and nativity plays is directly biblical and that is an origin of a lot of modern theater, so the overlap between early theatrical norms and Christianity is really strong. 
How I went into this video trying to explain why the academic system is flawed and somehow found myself as having one of the root causes be the Bible is not lost on me. Society is wild. But anyway, throughout history, comedy was always seen as low art in comparison to tragedy, which I think was further entrenched by the fact that street performance is more commonly farce and physical comedy, and that farce and physical comedy tend to somewhat tap into more lewd and inappropriate humor, which is seen as unsophisticated and for the poor uneducated people to enjoy. And then we bring in the Bible's dislike of laughter and the Middle Ages theater situation, which just adds to that idea. And that's built up over time, along with the pervasive idea of the tortured artist, to the point that we're at now, where we see comedy as being a way to ignore what's going on in the world and be self-indulgent, and tragedy as a way to be socially conscious and elite and educated, which by default means that tragedy must also be harder to perform because it is harder to process from the audience side. That's a gross oversimplification, but hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. And as someone who has studied both sides of the tragedy comedy spectrum, going from the deep darkness of Mackinac to full comedia within like six months of each other, they're both very difficult to perform in completely different ways. And I find comedy to be both much more difficult and more rewarding and energizing to learn. The difficulty of performing tragedy is an emotional one. How to set boundaries between yourself and your character, how to put just enough emotion into it that it looks real without completely exhausting yourself or feeling like you're so vulnerable as to be completely unsafe. Those are also skills that can be learned in therapy outside of a classroom setting, honestly probably should be taught outside of a classroom setting. The difficulty of comedy is a technical one. It requires keeping a straight face, being able to hop in and ad lib easily, um, mastering the absolute beast that is proper comedic timing and chemistry, understanding jokes with enough depth that you can play them off with feigned ignorance, uh, being able to read a crowd and play off of it because comedy is a much more interactive medium, and also things that you didn't think were funny, they will find funny and vice versa. And when it comes to like writing comedy, you have to understand your audience and what's going to to play and what's not going to play. And that also even carries across to staging as well. I also find that performing a tragedy on a low energy day is pretty easy to scoot by undetected, while playing a comedy on a low energy day is near impossible. So it requires you to learn how to economize your energy and balance your energy better. And I say this as somebody who primarily finds themselves playing tragic characters in dark shows. I love it, but it is a completely different muscle and also a space where I don't really use any of the skills that I was taught in theater school because acting sad is not difficult for me. Like. I I just that comes very naturally to me. So from a very basic teaching perspective, it doesn't make any sense to me why we prioritize training with tragedy because comedy is so much more to work with and build off of. And also you have more longevity of how long you can like run things and work with things without traumatizing people that all of that knowledge can then be carried over into the tragedy. All of the material I've been given in every other acting setting has just been like the darkest thing humanly possible. And from a more nuanced teaching perspective, one that talks about psychology and development and trauma and form practices and how students learn where I live. Um, it really does not make any sense to me why we prioritize training with tragedy because we well know that students are only able to really truly learn and retain information when they feel completely safe. I'm not saying pad your classroom and bubble wrap, but creating a trauma informed space where people feel able to step out of their comfort zones and expand their worldviews is the most effective way for people to learn information. We have so much data on this. I talk about this all the time. I have a video breaking down trauma informed and liberated spaces up here that you can check out if you want to learn more about how to do that. But if we are going to include hard things and dark things in our curriculum, which we definitely should, we definitely need to, we need to make sure that we are prepared for that and our students are prepared for that because otherwise they're just going to go straight into fight or flight and they're not going to process any of the lessons that come along with the hard and dark things. And we don't do this in theater education because we prioritize flexibility in this world, which we tend to define as I'm going to give you absolutely no information about anything ever and you need to be ready for all of everything all of the time, which is a necessary thing within the industry. Like I very much, you need that in order to survive. Um, it has been an adjustment learning to wake up every day and have no idea what's going to happen. And sometimes getting like a random email with a huge exciting opportunity that I have a 48 hour turnaround time. Like that requires a lot of flexibility and being able to, you know, jump into things and, and not be super anxious all the time. But that is not necessary in a classroom setting because in a classroom setting, you need to be relaxed enough to be able to properly process and comprehend information. And so structuring things in the most deliberately opaque way possible is never gonna be helpful. 
As I've said before in this channel, pushing past boundaries and stepping out of comfort zones in the way that our academic system is currently structured lets a very small portion of students do fine and the rest completely suffer while learning absolutely nothing, which indefinitely hurts minorities so much more because we are statistically more likely to be traumatized due to class, gender, race, ability, sexuality, gender ex- I put gender twice in that list, etc. And when, for your major, you are required to say, audition for every single main stage production at your school where every single show contains mentions of assault and you are, say, a survivor with a, your perpetrator still walking around campus that doesn't give you the ability to take care of your own health and safety in order to thrive, both within any of the shows they are doing, which will then affect what's on your resume going into your career, but will also affect your ability to succeed in all of your other classes, regardless of what those classes are about because of the extra cognitive load that production requires of you. Which again, primarily hurts multiply marginalized students who have a higher cognitive load statistically anyway, further preventing us from being able to succeed in a field where there are not a lot of us because of how supremacy of everything exists. And so there need to be more of us, but we have a higher dropout rate because of all of this stuff. And also these shows often create really unhealthy relationships between actors based around trying to cope with some really difficult content without being given the adequate tools on how to handle it. Meanwhile, we have the untouched comedy side that requires just as much, if not more, critical thinking. You can run scenes many more times with much less emotional load. Still has an element of learning vulnerability on stage and setting boundaries, but in a very different and much safer way. Has just as complicated of a dramatic structure, often requires more attention, and if we're going in with historical options, traditional tragedy is usually centered around kings and queens, while comedy gives you a much wider range of characters and types of people to work with. There's also the fact that comedy is a relaxing medium and laughter builds trust and friendships and community in a very unique and special way that is scientifically a lot safer than bonding over traumatic things. Not to mention that comedies also deal with real issues and tough issues as well, often in wittier and more carefully thought out ways, because real life is absurd. The nature of tragedy is inherently absurd, and using that as a medium to process tragedy and reclaim it and find joy is incredibly powerful, and if done right will cause just as much of a linger effect in your audience as a tragedy would. To quote Lindsay Ellis, when used smartly, comedy puts the unspeakable into understandable symbols through absurdism without dragging marginal groups through the mud. It's easier to pay attention to comedy, it's harder to dull your mind to it and dissociate from it in the way that we can when we see constant tragedy, it's easier to process, it's energizing, and it teaches your actors just as much if not more. Like, I love a well done heavy show. My favorite show I've seen in a while was Parade, which is very dark but very important, and it gets its message across beautifully, and I will never forget that show. But that show also didn't feel like it was shoehorning in traumatic things to hit trauma bingo like many of the shows I've seen in academic settings. It was a natural story that progressed as it did, and it was handled tastefully, and it left you thinking. I also had the ability to go see Peter Pan Goes Wrong the day after that, a full slapstick comedy that I will also never forget for completely different reasons. And when it comes to to the industry. If you never want to do a comedy, you don't have to. If you never want to do Shakespeare, you don't have to. Well, I'm doing Shakespeare now, so there is that. Whatever. If you never want to do a tragedy, you don't have to. There are enough shows and enough options that you can set boundaries about what you are and are not comfortable doing and what kinds of stories you want to tell. At an academic institution where there's only four shows to do and you kind of need to do all of them, you don't have those options, which means that we are burning people out and they're quitting before they even get to the industry. And as I said before, statistically a higher percentage of those people are going to be in minorities, which are the precise people we want and need more of in this industry. I'm not saying schools should lean entirely toward comedy, but we really need to even out our programs to be a solid mix of production types. And the content we work with in the classroom needs to as well. And when we do use tragedy, which I think we should just a lot less than we do, we need to make sure we're actually putting in proper protections and resources for our actors, that we have a purpose for why we are using that story. I'm looking at you, voice teacher who handed us a monologue about a woman's assault from her point of view to teach us voice. To teach us voice. We could have done that with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It would have been just as effective and half the class wouldn't have left the class crying. We also need to make sure that we are giving alternate options, that we are trigger warning things properly, that we are valuing the work of actors who do comedic stuff just as much as we do with the darker work. Because again, comedy is definitely a whole lot more difficult than tragedy to perform. Like getting a joke to land is very different from just saying a sad thing. And I would also like to add, I'm thinking about this as I'm editing, um, that there's also like an added pressure because of this phenomenon on marginalized communities because we only, because we take 
tragedy more seriously than we do comedy, we expect our media about minority people to be tragic in order to be taken seriously, which then like, like we expect every story about queerness to involve some element of like the trauma of coming out or the unaccepting family or whatever. We expect our disabled stories to be about the trauma of losing abilities. We expect our Jewish stories to nine times out of 10 be about the Holocaust. Like we do not give more breadth of existence for these marginalized groups because we see tragedy and the sadness of life as being inherently better in media than comedy does, which leads us to never experience disabled joy, Jewish joy, um, queer joy in the media. We don't get that. We don't get to experience that as much because of this phenomenon. So we're just piling more stuff onto the poor marginalized people who are already having a rough time in this industry. I just, why? This is so pointless. This whole thing is so pointless. I do not understand it. Anyway, back to the video. We often look at students, especially college students, as young adults that we need to prepare for the real world of the industry. But what we are currently doing is ignoring the fact that college is supposed to be the transition in between those two things, and that we have an obligation to actually teach them skills rather than yell at them to figure them out on their own. And that these people are still young with developing brains and specifically right now are very traumatized and behind in development, though that ideal is kind of ableist, whatever, due to the pandemic and the fact that we have lived in a post 9-11 world where we have always had to worry about school shootings in a way that other generations have not. Everybody is struggling right now and I do not understand why we think adding more struggle on top of that without any supports in place is going to magically teach people skills because that's not how education works. We have the resources, the research, and the ability to do better by our students and we aren't using them and it's so freaking frustrating. Especially someone who exists between teacher and student right now who gets messages from friends all the time who are really struggling in classrooms and theatrical spaces, dealing with things that I now know how easy they are to fix, and literally have the ability to fix because I give workshops to faculty about making accessible curriculum. But uh, anyway, that's all I have on this topic. I know this video is a whole lot shorter and less research than my videos of late, but I just want to talk about the fact that comedy is wholly underappreciated and how we glorify trauma and the arts for the benefit of absolutely no one. Um, and again, I say this as somebody who loves acting in comedy and tragedy equally because they use completely different acting muscles and they're both really rewarding and really fun in completely different ways. But I'm just so tired of seeing my friends and peers suffering for no logical reason because we know better than this and we are refusing to do better. And I just, I needed to get that out somewhere. So hopefully this is, gives words to experiences other people have had. Maybe this will make a change. I don't know. I don't think it's going to make a change, but it's a conversation to be had. I would love to know your experiences with this. Let me know in the comments what your theories are as to why this is a problem and how to fix it. You can also include your horror stories if you want, but just be mindful of trigger warnings because, you know, that's a nice thing to do. Um, and yeah, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for learning. Remember, it is never too late to start over. I look forward to seeing you, my dear, in the next one.